Our scripture texts for today, our Sunday scripture text for today is found in James chapter uh, 5, verse 16 and part B. And it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And the subject for today is the power of prayer. The power of prayer. Hallelujah. And we have so many individuals that are sitting in our midst right now that knows how that works. <laughs> Amen. They know what prayer can do already, and I hope when I preach it, it'll just kind of fortify you a little bit more where you want to do it again. Hallelujah. But prayer is very, very powerful. Hallelujah. And this text that we have today, amen, talks about the power of prayer. Hallelujah. Prayer, a power, I'm sorry, means something or someone who has power. Hallelujah. The power of prayer in the Holy Ghost is the dunamis power. Hallelujah. It is the power to perform miracles. It is the power to give gifts of healings. It's the power to make a change in whatever situation that you are in. Hallelujah. Dunamis power comes through the Holy Ghost. After that, the Holy Ghost is come. You shall have power. Hallelujah. You shall have the power to live right. You shall have the power to live holy. Hallelujah. You will have the power to perform miracles and make a change in many things that are happening in your life. Aren't y'all glad about the Holy Ghost? Amen. The Holy Ghost is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in this text, we have a lot of things that are talking about prayer. Hallelujah. And prayer is a petition or formal request that we give to the one that we know can make a change. Hallelujah. We don't pray to Allah. We don't pray to another Buddha. We don't pray to any of the other gods. But we pray to our God, who is the healer of our body, who is the deliverer of our soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I don't know what I'd do, church, if I didn't have Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like that old lady said, I get my medicine in the room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all done heard that already, I know. <laughs> Other people have to go to the drugstore, and some have to call the doctor's office to get a prescription, but said they give me my medicine in the room. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is omnipresent. God is omniscient. And God is the one who is taking care of of us right now. Hallelujah. Prayer is a supplication. Hallelujah. It's to pray to God and instead of praying to the Lord with a boisterous or an attitude, we have to humble ourselves before God when we pray for him. Hallelujah. It's a humbling experience. We have to give him all of the glory and all of the honor. We have to remember that he is holy and we are unholy. He is high and lifted up and that his train fills the temple. 
I'm calling on you, Lord, in a humble way. I'm not bragging about anything. I'm not telling you how good that I am. I'm not going to enforce upon you my characteristics and my abilities. But, Lord, I'm coming humbly to you. Because you don't have to answer me, but I'm coming humbly to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer is a request. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I know you have the ability to do the things that I'm asking you to do, but I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But I'm asking you, would you do this or that? Hallelujah. I'm trying to get deliverance from the thing that is happening to me, and I'm trying to get the victory over the things that are trying to overcome me. But Lord, I'm not trying to do anything to make myself feel like that I'm higher than I am. I'm coming to you humbly. I'm not giving you orders. You got to do this. You got to do that. God don't have to do anything. He is sovereign. He is independent. He doesn't have to answer our prayers. He can sit right there and let us pray all day and not answer. But prayer is something that we must approach God in humility. Ooh, hallelujah. Lord, look down upon me. Lord, look down upon my situation. Think about me, Lord. Look at my condition. The doctor has said this, and the hospital has said this, but I believe that you are fully able to bring me out of my condition. Touch me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Deliver me, Lord. Build me up, Lord. Bring me out, Lord. Ooh, hallelujah. If you bring me out, I will not hold my peace. I will tell everybody how good you are. Hallelujah. I will not mention all the medical things that have happened to me already, but my heart is fixed and my mind made up to do what the Lord said to you. Lord, I just want to thank you for being so good unto me hallelujah make love to the lord tell him how good he is tell him how wonderful he is hallelujah hallelujah don't tell him how many bad things he done because he didn't do nothing bad lord here i am in this condition Am I going to get well? Yes, if the Lord will. Am I coming out of this hospital? Yes, if the Lord will. Am I going to die? Yes, if the Lord will. Hallelujah. He's the one who controls everything about us. Hallelujah. 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 As we approach this message, we believe in the importance of prayer. Hallelujah. And how we should approach God when we get ready to pray. We believe also that patient, persistent prayer will change things. It'll change every circumstance. It will change every condition. Hallelujah. Isn't God wonderful? I said, isn't he wonderful, church? Hallelujah. In our message today, we want to examine the power of prayer. Hallelujah. Let's go back to... 
1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about a man named Elijah. Hallelujah. He was a prophet in Israel during the greatest time of idolatry and uh, hallelujah, people not paying attention to God and being backslidden, that was the greatest time that they have ever known. They had a king named Ahab, and he had a wife named Jezebel. Do I have to preach Ahab and Jezebel? <laughs> He was bad, but she made him worse. Hallelujah. He cried one time because he couldn't have Naboth's vineyard. Hallelujah. Jezebel, Jezebel said, get up off of your face, man. You're the king in Israel. Just let me help you. I'll get that vineyard for you. And she raised up someone who blasphemed and someone who told a lie, hallelujah. And they killed Naboth and came back and told Jezebel. And Jezebel said, well, go on down and claim your vineyard, hallelujah. And he was so happy. He was just jumping around. I got my vineyard. I got my vineyard. I got my vineyard. But when he walked in, he didn't have much joy because you know who met him? Elijah. <laughs> Elijah met him and told him that that vineyard would not prosper him anything. But God was going to judge him and Jezebel because they had killed Nabal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1, Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Abraham, Abraham, Satan, I rebuke you, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years according to my word. Hallelujah. The rain will not fall on Israel until I say so. Hallelujah. Your land is going to dry up. You're not going to have enough drinking water. You're not going to have enough water to raise crop. Because God told me to tell you, you will not prosper killing people for their vineyard. You cannot do wrong and get by. And maybe you're scared of Jezebel, and maybe other people are scared of Jezebel, but God is telling him, I'm not scared of Jezebel. Hallelujah. If you're bad, I will punish you. And whatever you want, hey, hallelujah, God is going to make it fail because there's no rain coming on the land for these years. Hallelujah. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook of Cherah, that is, before Jordan. And it came to pass that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. I'm going to give you lunch, 
breakfast, and dinner. You're going to get three square meals a day. You're going to have plenty of water to drink. Hallelujah. Because God has decreed it. And it is so. Hallelujah. And it shall be that thou shalt drink, thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. And he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is, before Jordan. Last verse. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh. What time? In the morning. He got breakfast every morning. <laughs> it wasn't the kind of breakfast that we would like. A uh, ravenous bird, a uh, prayer, a bird that preys on dead things. We might not want that kind of breakfast. But God sent him breakfast in the morning. I said he gave him lunch too, but according to the scripture, he only got two meals a day. <laughs> He got one in the morning and one in the evening. Hallelujah. And Elias prayed to the Lord that it would not rain. Hallelujah. He prayed that the Lord would stop the rain. Hallelujah. He prayed earnestly that it would be stopped, hallelujah. And for three years and six months, there was no rain on Israel. Three years and six months. Amen. When God said no rain, there ain't none coming. Y'all, y'all, yeah. <laughs> I believe God's going to help us. No, he ain't going to help you if you're wrong. Ahab was wrong. Jezebel was wrong. All right, let's turn over to 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41 through 44. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and eat and drink, for there is a sound of a abundance of rain. Hallelujah. You haven't had any rain for three years and six months, but I hear a sound of the abundance of rain. Hallelujah. You haven't seen the clouds get dark for three and a half years. The dew has not been on the ground for three and a half years. But I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then Elijah, hallelujah, said, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of the abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah, he went up to the top of Mount Carmel. Now he said it was going to happen. Hallelujah. But he used the power of prayer to make it happen. Hallelujah. He heard a word from the Lord that the rain was coming, but he used the power of prayer to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. 
He knew that God could not fail because God didn't fail to stop up the rain and keep it away. And God was not going to fail to bring the rain because keeping the rain away was in the hands of God and letting it come back again was in the hands of God. Hallelujah. 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 He cast himself down in verse 42 and hallelujah and put his face between his knees. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Elijah prayed the prayer for the rain. Hallelujah. And he said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again, but don't just go one time, go seven times. Because seven is the sacred number, and seven is the number of completeness. I got to complete my prayer. I have to touch the throne of God before deliverance will come. Just saying a prayer is not going to bring us out. This telling God one time is not going to put the thing in practice or bring it to pass. Go back again. Lord, I done prayed about this a lot of times. Go back at least seven times and try to touch the throne of God. Try to touch heaven. Try to touch the place where God is. Oh, God, will you please send my deliverance. Please send me a blessing. All the news is bad news. He went back seven times. Hmm. Maybe this is the message for today. And it came to pass at the seventh time, he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea. It's not a big cloud. It's just about the size of a man's head. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. And he said, go up and send to Ahab, prepare your chariot and get thee down that the rain don't stop thee. Stop at thee not. Hallelujah. Because God is going to send the abundance of rain. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. It feels good when I say that. Maybe there's some things you've been waiting on. Maybe there's some things you've been praying about. Revisit God again. Go back in patient, persistent prayer seven times, at least seven times. And see what God will do. He's a sovereign God. The answers to his prayer, our prayers, is yes, no, and wait. What am I waiting on, Lord? I'm waiting on you to make up your mind to see if this is what you want to do right now. But if you could get some more glory later on, you might hold out for a little while until somebody shouts hallelujah, until somebody gets happy when I think about what the Lord has done for me till somebody stands up on their feet and gives God praise. 
Nala Korea Sarara Botamasa Ilia Beno Namasa. Oh, 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 hallelujah. I want glory. I want honor. I want praise from the people of God. Oh, Shada, Korea Shada, Malia Shada, Hosama. Lift your hands and tell him thank you. Lift your hands and tell him I love you. Uh, lift your hands and tell him you are the God of my salvation. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Uh, give him glory. Give him honor for what he has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He may not come when we want him. But I came to tell you today, he'll always be on time. Mm. He will astound the doctor. Who shall I? He will put it not the medicine. Who hallelujah. He will perform miracles if we can only believe in the power of prayer. He can heal you. Can he heal you? He can deliver you and me and us and everybody that's in the live streaming audience. He has the power to heal. He decrees it and it is so. Don't look for it. It's gone. Don't think about it. It's gone. Don't keep worrying about it. It's gone. He decreed it. And it is so. It is so. Hallelujah. I know I'm spending a long time on number one. Oh, Tama. But sickness comes upon everybody. Oh, the preacher look like he don't never get sick. Don't fool yourself. My leg was hurting me terrible when I came in the house of God. But it's feeling mighty good right now. Ooh. You can't tell me he won't do it because he's doing it right now. You may not be able to see what the Lord has done for me, but he's blessing me. He's blessing you. He's blessing the church, and he's healing right now. Ooh. Ooh. Glory. Glory. Glory, 
Glory, glory. Lord, we give you glory for your healing. Glory for your deliverance. devil told me you ain't going to be able to stand up behind that pulpit tomorrow, but he's a liar. He's a liar, church. Don't listen to a liar. Think about the power of prayer. Think about the one who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask of him. Center your attention upon him, not upon your affliction, not upon your sickness, not upon your inabilities to do stuff like you used to. Because the God I serve and the God you serve is able to do anything but faith. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Took a lot of time on that point. But I believe that it was necessary. Because I'm not going to let the devil shut me down. He ain't going to do that. By God's help and by God's grace, I will complete my assignment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He tries to scare us. You feel a pain around your heart. Oh, I must be having a heart attack. No, it could be just nervousness. I got to get away from point number one. <laughs> Don't let him shut you down. Don't let him make you sad. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moving on. <laughs> I feel good. Because I didn't think I was going to be able to stand up this long, but my, my foot feeling good now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Maybe I shouldn't have said nothing. <laughs> Maybe I should have just took the blessing while it was coming in the church and just walk on. You all wouldn't even know that. <laughs> But I believe God. I believe God. I hope you believe him too. Is there any rivers that seem to be uncrossable? Is there any mountains you can't tunnel through? Let me recommend Jesus. God specializes in things that seem to be impossible. And he can do what no other power can do. Hallelujah. 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 Back to the book of James, chapter 5. Hallelujah. This is point number two. <laughs> it's prayer 
changes things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He begins this discord on number 13, and he says, this is the first part that we read. He said, is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Now, somebody said, well, if, I'm, if I got something going on, I'm supposed to run up to the altar and tell the church, Get out your anointing oil and lay your hands on me. But if it's affliction, James said, you, you're supposed to pray for yourself. And if you're merry and you're happy and you know it, <laughs> you're the one that should be saying amen. Amen. You should not be singing a sad song if you're married. <laughs> Lord, I just want to thank you for being good to me. Lord Jesus. 14, is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. 15, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And what else? James, and the Lord shall raise him up. What else, James? And if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. 16, confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that ye may be healed. Hallelujah. These are all things that we have to do about prayer. Hallelujah. Because there's a period at the end of that sentence, which means that's the last part of the exhortations of ways to pray and what to pray for and what to expect in your prayer. Hallelujah. And then James finishes up verse 16a with this thought. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Hallelujah. The word effectual means producing or able to produce the desired effect. Hallelujah. When you pray to the Lord, look for, hallelujah, the fruit of your prayer. Look forward with an aim in your prayer. I'm not just saying words. I'm not just putting sentences together, but this is something that I want to see prayer change for me. Hallelujah. My prayer is fervent. The word fervent means that it is very, very, very hot. <laughs> Y'all like all them berries on there? <laughs> it's not a wimpy prayer, it's not. Y'all going to get quiet on me now. I don't believe in all that noise. I don't believe in all that. Oh, God, please come, God. We need you right now, God. Open up the door, God. Help us, God. Hallelujah. 
Well, whatever works for you. Whatever the circumstance or the condition is, sometimes it should be a soft prayer. Your prayer should not be louder than everybody else that's praying. Uh, I got to move on. My daughter and I and my wife were in a New Year's Eve service, and somebody started shooting a gun outside of church. So the pastor told everybody, no matter what them crazy peoples are doing outside, we're going to have a prayer meeting. But do me a favor. Don't listen to the gun. Don't listen to the firecracker. Try to keep your mind on the Lord. And she said, I want everybody to bow down when they pray. Hallelujah. Some guy shot off a gun. The bullet went straight up in the air, came right back down through the roof of the church, and landed right beside our youngest daughter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And during that prayer, it was not a loud prayer. It was not a noisy prayer, but it was a prayer between the person who was praying and God himself. Hallelujah. And our pastor said, whenever we pray in this church, from now on, we're going to bow before the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer changes things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He had a hot prayer, glowing prayer, and was marked by intensity of feeling. He was really into it. When he prayed on Mount Carmel and told the Lord to let the rain come, hallelujah, it was an intense prayer. He sent his servant out to see if it had started to rain yet, and he came back and he told him, I don't see nothing. He said, go back seven times. And finally, he saw an answer to his prayer. It was just a little cloud about the size of a man's hand. And he said, go tell Ahab, I hear the abundance of the sound of rain. He prayed, and God closed up the heaven. He prayed again, and God opened up the heaven. Hallelujah. Because he prayed a, hallelujah, fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man or woman. We have to be right with God. I said we have to be right with God. The power of prayer brought rain to Israel. Hallelujah. 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 Lastly, the power of prayer still works. This is, the last, this is the last scripture. It's called the power of prayer still works. And I saw you all standing up praising the Lord. You, was, you know it still works too. I ain't the only one here that know it works. 
All right, Luke chapter 11, verse 5 through 10. And this will close out our sermon for today. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine is come in a journey to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within his house will answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut. My children are with me in bed, and I cannot rise and give thee. Hallelujah. Doesn't that sound like no? You might have to go someplace else to get some bread tonight. <laughs> Maybe UDF, they might have some. Huh? Huh? Verse 8. And I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to emphasize one word. The word is importunity. Importunity made him change his mind about what he had told his friend. Hallelujah. So I looked it up in my dictionary. Hallelujah. And it means to urge him and to beg him, beg on your knees, beg him persistently will move your prayer forward so that you will get some action. Hallelujah. He said to him, I'm not going to do this. I'm in bed. The children's in bed. We're ready to go to sleep and you want three loaves of bread. You, I, don't, I don't have a here, I'd have to go somewhere and find some for you. But if you keep begging me about it, and if you keep talking and urging me persistently, guess what I'm going to do? You can get your bread. Am I reading it right? And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. These are action words. Ask, see. And if you don't get what you want, knock, beat on the door. <laughs> see if you can move toward God. See if he will do something to help you. Don't just come one time. Come seven times. Keep on coming. Lord, I ain't giving up. Maybe it's been 30 years, but I'm not giving up. Maybe it's been 25 years, but I'm not giving up. Whatever I need from you. 
You have the power of prayer, and I'm exercising asking, and I'm exercising seeking, and I'm exercising knocking. You ain't going to get rid of me that easy, honey. I ain't giving up. I want to be healed. I want to be delivered. Number 10. For everyone that asketh, anytime you see ETH on the end of the word, it means more than one time. Got it? That's a grammar. I ain't, I ain't teaching at the academy, but that, that's a grammar word. ETH means I did it seven times, but I still didn't get an answer, so we're going to start all over again. We're going to do another seven. <laughs> I'm going to bombard God. I'm going to bombard his, hallelujah, his throne until I see something happen. I'm not going to criticize him for not doing nothing, but every day I'm going to ask him the same thing until I see results. But I remember the answers to your prayers are yes, I'm going to do it. No, I ain't going to do it. And the last one is you need to wait because I want some glory from this. When it happens, you ain't going to just jump around and wave your arms and stuff, but I want glory. I want the doctor to know. <laughs> I want the doctor to know that I serve a God who is able to deliver me. Able to bring me out. Able to heal my body. Hallelujah. And I give him all the glory. I wouldn't be healed today if it wasn't for him. I wouldn't be walking around and waving my arms and calling hallelujah if it wasn't for him. But this affliction was not unto death. God said yes. When the doctor said no. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, these are degrees of seeking for an answer. First, you ask. Second, you seek. And if it ain't come yet, you have to knock. Now, you don't have to wake God up because he stays awake all the time. Hallelujah. All the time. While we be snoring, he's still awake. He's on guard at your house. Make sure no evil people don't come in there and bother you. The Lord told me to tell you that. Don't be afraid to go to sleep at night because his angels are being camped around about you. Hallelujah. I'm going to quit. I'm excited, though. Yeah, I'm excited. I wish I could explain my excitement. <laughs> I am really excited about today. Hallelujah. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, the door shall be opened. Hallelujah. The power of prayer still works today. It still works. 
I said, it still works, Claire. Don't put it on the shelf and, and put your trust in something else that if you're not satisfied with the doctor's opinion, get a second opinion. Y'all getting quiet now. Elder trying to meddle in my business. No, I'm trying to keep you safe. I'm trying to keep you from having to go to the hospital and then find out later on that wasn't even what was wrong with you. You got to check that out first. Amen. Now y'all getting, you ready to go? <laughs> Amen. God bless all of you. Have a smile upon you is our prayer. And we have a good prayer groups. We have. Jesus um, was the best thing I've ever, ever done. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever, ever done.